Hi, it's David in the Stained Glass Studio. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, doing the right thing. It's kind of a personal subject for me because I'm always talking to students and telling them that the difference between an amateur and a professional is that a professional will fix their mistakes. All right, now I want to show you what's happened on this window. Um, right here, there is a little crack in the window. I'm going to draw a picture of that little crack so that you can see it. And I've drawn a picture here of, of what that crack looks like. And you can see that the it just came down and then went back up. And so normally, uh, that's the kind of thing we could cover up. I put a piece of tape, copper foil tape, here and here, and then soldered over it, and it looked fine until Jeannie cleaned the window off. And then it just stuck out like a sore thumb. It did not look good. So then what were our uh, uh, alternatives? Well, uh, one of the things that we sometimes can do with the window is put an additional uh, uh, line. And so I could put a cut line right here and just simply uh, run a piece of foil here and I would do the same thing on the other side of the window but I decided that that would not help that's going to hurt the integrity of, of the window. We want it to look as good as it possibly can, can be because this really is a big window. Okay, this is a really big piece of glass. That's the only difference between uh, this repair and any other repair. It's just that this is so much bigger. And so the whole window is very unwieldy. So the first thing we do whenever we replace a piece of glass is we begin by scoring the glass many times so that it breaks easily. So that's what I'm doing. I'm scoring across the glass. I want to get right up into the corner there. I continue all the way across. And now you see I'm really committed. It took me a lot of thought to really get to the point where I could convince myself that yes, I did indeed need this piece of glass to be replaced. Okay, I've got them all scored across this way. Now I'm going to go back the other direction. I want this to be able to have every opportunity to easily break out. Okay, so now it's all scored. Now the big question is how can I get this to fall out of the window? See, there's no space underneath here. Hardly any space. So it would be difficult for me to break it, break it out. So what I'm going to have to do is pull this whole window. Yeah. But look at this big window. It's, um, it's going to be difficult to, uh, to support it. So what I'm going to do is put a stick that will go from here over to this other table close by. And first what I'll do is just begin to drag it. See how it, it kind of hold, hangs down? Okay, right there would be the perfect place. But what I need is some sort of support because see it's hanging out. It it's, it's wants to fall. So I've got to get a stick and I'm going to go get one right now. Okay, now I'm going to put a trash can down below this area where we're going to work. Um, I've got my soldering iron heating up. While it heats, I'm going to see if I can get any of these pieces out of here. Just, just so it'll be easier. And 
and now you can see the the repair that I had done. It's pretty easy to see it now, and you can see how that looked. Just it stuck out. And I'll begin to desolder this piece. And I just pull gently, but hardly at all. I'm letting the solder just melt away. It's really handy to have that trash can just below because it just melts right, right away. want to make sure that you have very good ventilation when you're doing this type of work. Alright, now that I'm getting the last of the foil off, I like to take and make sure that I go back across and run it along the bottom edge to make sure that I don't have any um, icicles hanging down. So now that I've got that ready to go back in place, I can just now, first I'm going to remove my stick. Because it's... Because I'm going to be holding it up by, by hand. And now I can gently push the window. Back up. And now it is... Now, now we're safe. So now I'm going to go cut the piece of glass. Okay, well I've already traced my pattern onto this piece of glass. Now it is a big piece, and so the first thing I want to do is cut off the excess. And I do that with a T-square. And I just simply run my cut along that edge, and then snap it off. I score right on the inside of the the uh, line from where I traced. Now I want to tap this just a little bit so I can encourage it to break right where I want it. I don't want to lose this corner. See, there's a little bit of a line left, and I'll be grinding that off.
Okay, now that will fit in there just right. <laughs> okay, I've got the piece that David cut so perfectly. And I'm just going to just grind it a little bit. Uh, not that I need to make it any smaller. It's just that I want to get rid of these shards up here because I don't want to cut myself while I'm foiling it. glasses when you do this job. off because the copper foil tape doesn't want to stick if it's wet. So we go through a lot of towels and rags so you can have your friends save their old towels for you. Okay, the bigger the piece, the trickier it is to foil because you have to, because it's just awkward. Okay, I'm going to just put it right in between, making sure that it's in the middle. I'm going to push down on that first bit. I kind of use my hand as a table and I lay the copper foil right on top and then I can move the glass along and then with my thumb I can push away copper foil. Every once in a while just kind of look both sides to see that I'm in the middle. When you're looking at a at a window that's one way that they can tell the professionalism of a window is to see if the copper foil is showing after you've soldered. So this is kind of a crucial point to try to get your window as professional and an expert looking as possible. Okay, I'm to a corner. Bring it around and continue. This is where you'll be glad once you can go back to, to foiling little tiny pieces. cut this but since I it'd be kind of hard to grab the scissors I'm just going to tear it and that works and then I'm going to pinch all the way around I want this to really be stuck tight on the glass nice little corner when you're folding. In the corners, kind of a hospital corner. Okay. Now I'm going to get my trusty fid here. 
and I'm going to come toward me like that because I don't want to tear the copper foil. If you do happen to tear the copper foil, that's um, not too terrible. You can fix it. You can put another piece on there and cover it up and, and it's okay, but hey, if you don't have to repair, that's even better. Okay, I am burnishing this down. There we go. It's all ready for David to put back in. Okay, now before I put this down, what I want to do is put a couple of pieces of scrap glass right here, and they will hold it up. Because remember, on the other side, I've got lead holding this up now. So now, uh, now that I've got these pieces in place, I can lay my piece back down. There we go. Now I'm going to start to, I'm going to solder it in place. Another little. It's a little bit high. You know, one of the things I'm concerned about here. Now the rest of it is just simply the same technique that we always use when uh, soldering copper foil. Really nothing is, there's no difference between this and any new, new piece once it's in place. And I've got it all, I've got it tapped. We're ready to go. Thanks, this has been David in the Glass Studio. Um, I hope this has been a valuable um, uh, exercise for you to watch. Um, uh, you know, it happens to all of us. We all have to uh, replace uh, pieces of glass uh, every now and then. Uh, it's not something I really enjoy, but I found that if I get right into it, get it over with, then I don't have to think about it for days and weeks. Mm -hmm.